Hey everyone, welcome back to my garage. It's been a few weeks since I've turned anything, so I'm just looking to do a simple, quick little project. Um, I have a bunch of ash sitting in the garage drying. Um, it was cut down in March, but it feels actually pretty dry. We'll see what it's like when I get inside of it. It's roughly nine by five. Uh, it before, weeks ago, before I left out of town, um, I was able to stick a thin piece of plastic in here about six inches. Um, so I filled it with epoxy just because I didn't want it flying apart when I eventually turned it. So this should be hard by now. Um, but yeah, it's it looks pretty plain. I'm hoping there's a little something more inside. Uh, this is just from the anchor seal. But um, yeah, if it's this plain, <laughs> I'll have to do something else with the wood. Uh, figure it out, something to make it look good. But yeah, I just want to get back into turning since it's been so long. I got a few projects lined up, uh, but just looking to do something simple and quick and fun. All right, got my 5 eighths inch bowl gouge turned into 545. Let's get this thing around. Well, the wood is dry. And I didn't do too good of a job of filling this crack. It's interesting, it goes along one of the rings. There's a knob there. No, that's not a crack, but whatever this gap is, it goes along one of these rings. It'll be interesting to see. It's pretty plain wood. Maybe I'll turn away most of it, who knows. The end grain, even though that was a supported grain cut, look at that tear out right there. I'm not even trying right now, but still, that's that's not a good sign. Anyhow, keep going, shaping this thing. It's getting rounder, so I'll be able to turn it faster. See if you can see. Whatever's up with this one ring, this knot's almost turned out. That's where that gap goes down. It's gonna be interesting to see what's in there. I don't know if this will show it. That ugly tear out right there at the end grain. Man, that's not good. <laughs> Anyhow, it's pretty plain wood. It does have nice grain, I think probably do something either burning it or dyeing it you can see around the knot it'll have some cool light features but yeah just not too colorful anyway keep seeing what shape this takes 
All right, got a three and five eighths inch tenant marked out, turning over 650 now. Just gonna start, keep forming the bottom. It's level. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna go a little deeper. That's only a quarter inch. I'm gonna go three eighths inch uh, with the tenant. Bring it back in a bit. It's a little bit bigger than 3 eighths, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit and just flatten it off, off camera. That's flat. Yeah, I'm going to take it down about a sixteenth inch. Oops. Yep, 3 and 5 eighths. All right. It gets worse, not better. Yeah, that epoxy didn't make it down this far. Oh, crap. Hopefully it holds together. Hmm. I'm going to do some more turning, turn this down a little bit, and then decide if I bother with filling it or just see what happens. Well, I've gone down deeper. <laughs> There's no end in sight. So I'm just gonna round this off and shape it and see what see what it looks like when it's done. Hopefully I don't have to fill it. You know, it's nothing special, but some of these things go just pretty deep. So I'll end up turning the whole thing away. So I'm just gonna catch this side up to where I was on the bottom and uh, continue from there. I probably need to move you out of my way. Sand grain's gonna be awful. Ugh. I don't like this type of ash. There's some color in there though. 
So that's nice to see. I just don't like this end grain tear up. Anyhow, let's keep refining this shape a bit. for that. Let me bring it over here. Much better. At least on the end grain right there. There's no tear out. I, you know, sharper uh, uh, half inch bowl gouge. But the bark was over here. <laughs> so look, three weeks off and I already forgot which which direction to get the best cut in. Ah. At least up here, that's much better. A little, could have used some improvement right through there. Where it was chattering just a little bit. Maybe a little too far away on the tool rest. But this end grain is definitely cleaned up. And you can kind of get the faintest glimpse. Of a, a little bit of darkness into that uh, heartwood right there. Anyhow, I'm going to get this cleaned up from here to here. Uh, bring it back. with a knot. This goes down. More holes with a knot. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta come up from here. Coming, I got a better cut, but I still gotta come up from here and get that smooth cut again. And this doesn't transition nice and smooth. I gotta smooth this out right through here, this fat spot. Pick up that cut right there, finish it off. Stupidly created a little hump right here. Gotta fix it.
you saw, I was thinking about shear scraping. So freaking close to how I want it. Get some light over here. No tear out on the end grain. Just, uh, different kind of slope than I'm used to. At least it's a consistent curve. There's a line there. Yeah, a line right there. Either shear scrape it or sand it out. But because of all this, uh, all these, whatever you want to call it, this stuff that goes along this this ring here, you know, the, the knots are what they are, but this is cracked. I am not going to sand it until I turn the inside out, turn the inside first and see what I got. Then I'll sand the inside and the outside at once just in case I have to fill it in with anything. I'm hoping I can leave this open and natural and not fill it. Um, but like I said, it'll it'll depend on how it, the inside turns um, tomorrow. I'm gonna stop on the outside tonight um, and then come back to this. Got a good surface. It's better than I thought it would be on the inside. Yeah, I just don't want to spend the time sanding on the outside until I see what what I really have to work with with the inside too, because I'm sure these will go all the way through. Anyhow, long way to say it, but that's where I'm at. See you tomorrow. All right, I'm back like three or four days later. In any case, it's been a while since I had turned the outside of this bowl. Got it flipped around in the four jaw chuck. Um, it's dry, hasn't moved at all, obviously. So I'm gonna drill it out, um, go use my forcer bits and help me out, take about uh, four inches of the depth out of the center. And I'll show you a little bit of that and then we'll turn out the rest of the middle and see what we got. A little bit of moisture still inside in terms of what's coming out. It's squeaking too much, so I'm turning it off. But uh, got to drill out. And away we go. Fix it. You saw that mistake there. Turned into a catch. I was sloppy. Being a little bit aggressive with a very hard wood. Just hollow out as quickly as I can. So now I gotta fix this top. Anyhow, I'll bring it back when I get a little bit closer. It's just more of the same. Alright, I got a half inch bowl gouge now. I have fixed the top. I'm gonna get the 
there's a lot of tear out on the end grain right, right there. So I'm gonna get the, before I go too deep, I'm gonna get the width of my bowl and establish it here at the rim in case there's any flexing. So it'll be a quarter inch thick. So it looks like. Have you view the end grain? Here we go. Tiny bit of, if you can see that, tiniest bit of tear out. It is smooth, so I won't I won't come up to this top inch of the rim anymore. I'll just work down here. Just of how I'm hollering this out. I just got to get the toolbar in there or tool rest in there a little bit further. All right, I stopped for a second um, just so I could show this. This was the issues with the outside. They all seem to traverse this one growth ring. So I'm getting close. I got about three quarters of an inch to go. Let me get the light over there. And I got into that whatever is rotten in that ring, I got into it. Um, so the good news is I think I'll be able to turn it out. Um, you can see where one of those groups of holes comes through. Um, I got to clean up in the inside, obviously. I'm being rough. But hopefully I can turn some of that blackness out. And, and it'll be interesting. I'm really curious to find out what's going to come all the way through. Obviously, other than that. But hopefully I can turn some. Whatever that blackness is, whatever happened during that growth ring, God only knows. Um, hopefully I can turn most of that out. Anyhow, bring it back in a minute. Well, I got through most of the black crud, if you could see it, but there's definitely something wrong with that, in that growth ring or whatever. I don't know if it's a fire or what. There's still some of that blackness or rot, whatever it's from. There's cracking running down the bottom. Um, a little hole that looks like it's going to go into where my tenon is. Um, finding all kinds of stuff in there. So I'm going to turn, a, I have a little bit of room. It's a quarter inch thick down to about right here. So I have a little bit of room left down at the bottom. I'm going to try to turn away um, and see where that leaves me. God only knows. We'll find out. Well, it's 
some of the cracks got on that hole that goes down to the into the tenant still there. Looking a little better. I'm not gonna go too far though. I don't want a lampshade. Um, I'm gonna figure this out a little bit off camera. Bring it back in a minute. Scraper. God, it's so close. I screwed up the bottom right there. I just want to get that one little hole out if I can. Enough space. It's, let's see if I can read on it. Hmm. I think. I think I do. I just have to be very careful when I remove the tenant. I think I might. I think I might have enough space. There's gonna be this stuff on the side and I can see light coming through where that black ring was on the outside. Just wanna get that bottom cleaned up. So bring it back in a bit. got it completely out. <laughs> I don't know how good this shows. I think it shows okay. You just got a lot of glare. Um, I got that. Most of that hole turned out is the tiniest faint. It's, it's just this ring, this growth ring where all the problems are. The only blackness is where it goes through with some daylight, but you see it all around. But in the middle, there's some things happening with the light. And these are the same holes that come through. I think we're there. It's gonna take some sanding. I still don't know if I should glue this up or not, but um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Let's see. Quarter inch thick, it gets a little bit thicker, but I'm afraid of going too deep. It's uh, let's see, eight and three eighths inch wide, four and a quarter inch deep, and it's geez, a sixteenth inch short, short of uh, four inches deep this way. So I, I should have a just a six, what is that? Whatever, 16th inches over a quarter inch uh, left on the bottom. Maybe I'll just try a little more scraping just because it's so. I'm not going to go through the ring. It goes all the way through. Might be close enough. I'm rambling now, but uh, I'm going to have to decide what to do next. Move to sanding or see if I can do a little bit better. It's not half bad right now. All right, I'm stopping here for the night. Um, I'm actually golfing tomorrow, so I'll come back in a couple days and decide what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to try to resist the urge to fill all those holes and, and defects and just let it be and just move on to sanding in a couple days when I come back to this. Um, I did win another pass uh, with my scraper, uh, round nose scraper and negative rake scraper. Uh, got it as close to a quarter inch thick throughout. Um, as best as I could tell with, with, my, with my tools. I got it uh, pretty uniform uh, and it's pretty clean. There's a couple lines that you can see on the inside, but that'll be for sanding. I didn't want to come up back up to the edges. Um, I already gave you the dimensions on that. But the bottom, I mean, you see the defect, but it, 
defects, but it definitely looks a lot cleaner than it did, especially getting most of that blackness out of there. Anyhow, um, this light. There's a lot to, uh, a lot that comes through. But, um, uh, probably use Mahoney's walnut oil on this. But I'll come back in a couple days, try to sand the inside and outside of this. Um, see where I'm at but yeah I, I think I'm gonna try to resist resist the urge to, to fill all this stuff and just let it be what it wants to be uh, in the end it's not all that bad it's just a practice goal getting back into turning after a few weeks off sorry I'm picking up and I knew when I was turning earlier I'd felt a piece that had come out um, bounced off me came out from about right there but this is what I'm talking about. It's all that stuff that's part of that ring. Look at the back side of that. Just the blackness. Not spalting. I don't know if it's rot or from a fire. It was about right there. You can see, you know, as I was, if you look back in that video, you can see when I was turning this part of it to the bottom. It's an interesting, I've never come across a piece like that um, where it just followed one of the years of the growth ring. Um, maybe somebody could shed some light on this. What are the possible causes that hurt this tree in that year of its growth? Anyway, just an interesting find as I'm picking up tonight. See you in a couple of days. So far, it's just, uh, I've done 120 and 180. So, this little, this crack in here does not like the scallops. It's ripping them off. They're getting caught. So I'm having to cut them off. I'm really regretting not filling this, fighting that urge to fill all those holes and, and that gap right there that shows through. But if I trim the scallops off, the chance it's pretty good. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going up to 600. Not much color to it, but green is okay. Right. Time to move on to a finish. All right, let's put some oil on this thing. See what it's got to show. Unfortunately, not too much. There's the faintest color. I don't know if it picks it up in there, but it just there's just not enough of it to really show anything. Oh well, I'll bring it back when this is done. Mm 
Alright. Have a nice lathered on thick. Let that soak in and I'll buff it off. And I guess come back tomorrow and uh, remove the tenant. And just give you another view. I loosened it up off of the tenant. Um, so you see that gap I did that on purpose as I was so I wouldn't get oil all over my my chuck but here's the outside it's pretty wood it's got some chatoyants right there um, it's got those faults I was just hoping there'd be more color if that shows up Right there it's like there's a little shading from heartwood where it looked like there should be some but just wasn't prominent enough to stand out but all in all it's not bad nice to be turning again and yeah we'll bring it back tomorrow or whatever day i decided to get this tenant off of here pretty level I'm gonna make it concave bring it down to a little bit and chisel off the bottom gotta make sure I don't go all the way through the bottom but I'll make it a little more concave than that got it slowed down to about 200 rpm descended. Got him sanded. Hey, I'm back with the finished bowl. I have it upside down because the bottom is actually my favorite part the way this grain looks. It's pretty simple, you know. It just didn't have much to it. Simple little bowl, but where the where the grain comes together, and this bottom is definitely the highlight of the bowl, um, just didn't have enough color to prominently come through, or it could have been much, much better. But whatever, uh, whatever happened in that year of growth in this tree, um, that's what added the character. And below that, yeah, that's definitely the highlight down there. Um, below that growth ring that that's what's kind of cool and stands out so it's just a simple little bowl in the end we'll fill it with uh, popcorn or potato chips watch a football game watch a movie or something but it is what it is nice little project anyhow thanks again for watching I really appreciate it uh, we'll move on to the next project see you soon